Hello again to all the students of ELJMC. Today we are going to discuss the purpose of assessment. As future teachers, you have to bear in mind that assessment has to be conducted periodically for the following reason. First, to diagnose. Second, to form. Third is to sum up. And the last one is to do some placement. So let us uh, go over one by one and discuss thoroughly what it means to diagnose, to form, to sum, and to place. Isa-isahin natin siya. So the first purpose of assessment is that teachers need to do assessment in order to diagnose. We call that diagnostic assessment. So why? When you go to the doctor, your doctor will diagnose your illness. We'll check out what's your problem. We'll see what's wrong with you. So that's the same as the diagnostic purpose of assessment. Why do we need to diagnose? We need to diagnose in order for us to determine the weakness of our students. So the first one is that we have to check out what's wrong with our student or meaning um, we need to understand those preliminary learnings of our students and the prerequisite knowledge about the subject that we are going to teach which the student did not catch up during the previous school year. Magbigay tayo ng halimbawa ah. For example, Ang subject mo ay English. So that's English 2. You are going to teach them to construct sentences. But then again, the prerequisite knowledge with the lesson sentence construction is that they should understand subject verb agreement. So therefore, it is very important that you diagnose first whether your student have weaknesses in those prerequisite lessons about sentence constructions meaning do they really have enough knowledge about subject verb agreement can they really identify nouns pronouns verbs and other parts of speech if there are problems with their understanding about the parts of speech and the subject verb agreement that's the weakness that we have to target first so that they will be able to understand our lesson, which is parts of speech. So what's the purpose of diagnostic assessment? Binibigay ang diagnostic assessment so that you can diagnose what's wrong and give intervention if in case there are some weaknesses which will result from your diagnosis. But aside from looking into the weaknesses, we also check out their strength. Bakit kinakailangan ng strength? Bakit kinakailangan alam ko yung strength? Baka naman, you are going to teach uh, a seemingly complex subject, meaning para sa iyo ang hirap ng lesson na ituturo mo, pero sa kanila, sobrang dali na pala. Ibig sabihin, they have taken up all the, the lessons that you are going to teach, so meaning ang knowledge pala nila doon ay... Uh, advance na, pero ikaw, ituturo mo pa rin sila from the basic. So, sayang yung panahon, sayang yung oras. Sana nakapag-advance ka dun sa higher subjects at hindi mo na itinuro yung subject na yun. Bakit? Kasi na-diagnose mo, nalaman mo that that is their strength. Meaning, they already know those topics. So, when do we do diagnostic assessment? So, you also check out the strength of the students. So when do we do this diagnostic assessment? We do this before instruction. So when we say before instruction, before you teach the lesson or before you teach the topic. Okay? So just like what we have said earlier, our example is of course in English, our example is sentence construction. So before teaching, your lesson about sentence construction, you should give diagnostic test first. In order for you to determine, again, the prerequisite knowledge which are needed in 
constructing sentences. For math majors, before you teach um, addition or multiplication of binomial in algebra, it should be that you have to diagnose first whether your students understand signs and symbols, variables in um, algebra at the same time do they have enough knowledge about the fundamental operations in mathematics. There are problems with that. There will really be problems when you teach that lesson. Kahit anong galing mong teacher, kung yung prerequisite knowledge dun sa subject na ituturo mo, hindi na attain ng mga estudyante mo, hindi nila makukuha yung lesson na ituturo mo. So you start with diagnostic assessment para before mo ituro yung main lesson, i-reteach mo muna yung mga lessons na hindi nila o kumbaga yung mga prerequisite knowledge na hindi pa buo sa kanila bago mo ituro yung main lesson. So some of you would say, mom, I'm time consuming. What do you want? Would you like your students to really understand your teaching or not? And the only way to do that is to make sure that all the prerequisite knowledge required for your lessons are attained by your student. That's the only point of time that you can say that your students are ready to learn your lesson. So meaning, this diagnostic assessment also have the purpose of preparing your students. Where are you preparing your students? To your lesson. Okay? So that is diagnostic assessment. I hope it's clear to you. So if you have questions, you may ask your teachers. Next, we also have formative assessment. First, to diagnose. Next, you form. What is formative assessment? A diagnostic assessment is usually given before instruction. Formative assessment, since you are forming, uh, you are in the process of helping out your students learn something. Again, uh, the, the root word is form. So meaning, you are molding, you are helping out your students learn something. You are in the process of helping your students. Okay? So, when do we give this? And what is the purpose of formative assessment? Um, you are, sabi nga natin, you are forming. Why? Because you would like to know, in formative assessment, we are trying to understand or we are trying to have an idea whether our students learn what we have taught or is learning what we are teaching. Ito yung point of time na kinakailangan mong i-assess. Natutunan ba ng estudyante ko yung mga sinasabi ko? Naiintindihan ba nila yung sinasabi ko? So, in order for you to gauge whether your students are learning something from what you are saying, right after the topic is taught, you ask questions. Okay? And those questions being asked during the time of discussion are called formative assessment. Or sometimes, formative assessment are given right after a small topic is discussed in order, in order to check whether your student really learned what you have just taught. And remember, no, since it's formative assessment, you are forming again. You are forming. You are helping them learn. It is not graded. Why? Because formative assessment is part of the instruction. It's part of your helping hand. Okay? So, for example, example of formative assessment, recitation during the discussion. Your teachers would be asking your opinions about the topic, and then you will be um, asked to say something about the topic or to give examples of the of a situation about the theory which was discussed by your teacher. It's an example of formative assessment because your teachers are verifying whether you really understood the lesson or the discussion. Example pa ng formative assessment. Pagkatapos kong i-discuss itong apat na ito, magbibigay kami ng exercise. Yung bibigay na exercise sa inyo, ang tawag doon ay formative assessment. Ibig sabihin, hindi graded yon. 
chinetchen ni teacher kung naiintindihan niyo ba yung lesson na i-discuss. So, yun ang unang purpose nun. They are trying to learn. They are trying to gauge whether you are learning. No? At the same time, they were trying to verify whether they can move to the next topic. Your result ng formative assessment, yes, it's not graded. Yes, it's not it's not um, part of your scores. It's part of your grades, no? But, through the formative test, nagkakaroon ng idea si teacher kung kinakailangan ba niya na i-reteach yung lesson dahil marami pa ang hindi nakakaintindi and she needs to give more example or she may proceed to the next topic kasi it was already well understood. Kapag ka hindi pa Okay, 70% of the student did not understand the lesson. Then, your teacher needs to give supporting discussions. What are those supporting discussions? The teacher can give more drills. The teacher can give more examples. Or the teacher might repeat or reteach the whole lesson. Depende sa kanya. At the same time, it can also... Number three is that it can also um, gauge whether the teaching strategy of your teacher is effective. Okay? Sinacheck din doon kung natutunan ninyo, ibig sabihin effective yung teaching strategy ng teacher. Okay? Then, kung hindi ninyo natutunan yung lesson, when once na nag-reteach siya ng lesson, ang gagawin ni teacher, he will change his teaching strategy. Kasi baka yun ang hindi effective. No? So, yun yung reason kung bakit ka nag-formative test. May magtatanong siguro sa inyo, eh, ma'am, papano kung ang um, nangyari? Marami ang hindi nakakuha na as most of the students did not get the topic, meaning they did not really understand. Ang ginawa ni teacher, pinalitan na po niya yung teaching strategy niya. Pero ma'am, hindi pa rin natin naintindihan. Eh, ang ginawa ni teacher, nag-reach na ulit niya. Siya. Pero ma'am, hindi pa rin namin naintindihan. Ano na ang next move ni teacher? The next move of the teacher in cases like that is to go back to this part. Diagnose. So there are cases that even though technically the real um, scenario should be you diagnose before instruction, there are cases that we might be thinking that your our students or the topic is easy and our students are capable of doing it but at the end of the day hindi kasi nakailang reach ka na hindi pa rin nila naiintindihan yun na yung point of time na kinakailangan mo na mag-diagnose because the reason why they don't understand might be because they lack the prerequisite prerequisite knowledge about the lesson so yun yung point of time na Kahit during the discussion, during instruction, mag-diagnose ka. Okay? Wala na pang limitation yun. You can diagnose before, during, basta kinakailangan mag-diagnose, you may do that form of assessment. Okay? What are examples of formative assessment? Just like what I said, drills, recitation during the discussion, seat works, board works, and other things. Those are examples of uh, formative assessment. Okay? Okay, so now, diagnostic test or diagnostic assessment and formative assessment are non-graded, but we move to something which is graded. This is the summative test. Summative test, the purpose of this is in order to determine the changes which you have achieved before the instruction until the end of instruction. Ano yung mga pagbabago na nagkaroon kayo? What did you really learn before? Uh, parang if we are comparing the before and after scenario. So, tinitignan natin, ano ba talaga yung natutunan ng studyante? And we are now quantifying your learning experience. Ito na yung point that we are quantifying our learning experience. This is the reason why the title of the subject is not assessment for, for learning. 
Kung mapapansin nyo yung title, descriptive title na subject natin, is not assessment for learning. Or meaning, it's not uh, for me focusing on formative or diagnostic. It's assessment of learning, which is mainly summative. Summative tayo. Anong summative? Paano gagrade ang si estudyante? Okay? You give, this quizzes are graded. So, what are examples? Siyempre, lahat ng graded. Term requirement, quizzes, exams, lahat ng graded na test. Dito nagpo-fall sa summative test. Okay? Anong purpose? Para ma-check kung ano yung natutunan niya talaga at the end of it. After all the formative instructions, ano yung talagang summary or result ng learning experiences ninyo. Okay? Okay, so the last one, I hope you uh, you are following, no? I hope na intindihan ninyo yung tatlo. Because the last one is a special kind of assessment. This is special. Because it's not usually seen inside the classroom, but it is mainly seen um, when we would like to take in the bigger picture. Kaya nga siya special eh. By the word itself, place. Placement. Okay? Uh, it may happen inside the classroom, but it can happen outside the classroom. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng placement? We give placement tests or placement assessment when we would like to select people who would qualify a particular situation or a particular scenario. Example, in selecting those students who could really um, be placed in ELJMC and could really, paano ba yun? Kaya nila na makasurvive dun sa demands ng ELJMC, we give placement tests. And only those who will pass the qualifying examination in ELJMC will be placed in ELJMC and could enroll in ELJMC. Other example of placement testing, if the teacher would like or if the school would like to select students who will qualify the SSC section. Sa case natin, yung mga retention natin, retention examination sa accountancy, na before sila mapunta sa second year accountancy, they have to take an examination, ang tawag natin doon ay placement test. Although, we call the kind of placement test as a retention test, but technically, as a form of assessment, we call that placement exams. Because tinitignan natin if they can really survive the demands of a particular scenario or uh, situation. Kapag nag-select si teacher na ipang lalaban sa quiz team, placement testing. Okay? So those are the four purpose of assessment. So I hope you understand every bit of the topic. And if there are things which are unclear, you may ask your teachers. Thank you so much.